Hello guys, welcome back to the Medicine PYQ topic series episode 12 and the topic I have chosen is COPD and the goal criteria. So let's get started. So the PYQ question which came in 2018 and 2020 uh, where the first question, the goals criteria for very severe COPD is FEV1 by FVC less than 0.7 and FEV1 less than 30%, option B FEV1 less than 70%, option C FEV1 less than 50% and option D both A and C. And the second question, a 60 year old man who is a known case of COPD presented with acute exacerbation and is admitted to the ICU. Which of the following statement is correct with regards to the initial management of this patient? And the options, uh, A, non-invasive PPV should be given, invasive PPV should be given, IV corticosteroids should be administered and permissive hypercapnia is allowed. So let us quickly go through the topic in short so, and we will come back to the questions. Uh, we will not be discussing the entire COPD in this video, but we will just be highlighting the salient features. So COPD as the name says chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So it's an obstructive disease. And uh, as you can see in the image, that is a healthy airway where alveoli is uh, normal, the smooth muscles and the normal bronchial tube and the airway is normal. But if you see the image below, there are two main entities which you should be aware uh, when we are talking about COPD. One is emphysema, one is chronic bronchitis. Uh, so in chronic bronchitis, now, there is inflammation and excess mucus and in emphysema there is alveolar membrane breakdown that is there is more retention of uh, air and hyperinflation is seen and the patient presents with symptoms like chronic cough, fatigue, dyspnea, production of mucus, shortness of breath, chest discomfort. These are salient features of COPD and the causes being smoking is the most important cause and certain other causes like air pollutants and genes are also there. Uh, coming to the risk factors for COPD, so the smoking is very important cause. Then lung irritants like chemical fumes, then family history with the AATD gene that is the uh, anti-alpha trypsin deficiency gene being linked to the COPD and then history of respiratory infections as a child. Now coming to severity of COPD, that is the goal criteria, it is a very important table which you should remember. As per the gold criteria, they have divided the severity of COPD into four stages. And the point to be noted here is in spirometry, the FEV1 by FVC ratio in obstructive diseases are always less than 0.7. That is the main diagnostic criteria. So here the FEV1 by FVC ratio will be less than 0.7 in all cases. Coming to the severity, so they have graded the severity as per the values of FEV1. So FEV1 more than 80% is stage one that is mild. From 50 to 80 percent it is stage 2 that is moderate from 30 to 50 it is stage 3 that is severe and less than 30 it is very severe that is stage 4. So this is an important table you can keep a screenshot questions have come from this. So once you have diagnosed the COPD by spirometry where the FEV1 by FVC ratio is less than 0.7 and also you have graded the severity as per the FEV1 then comes the classification that is the ABCD classifications which is based on the symptoms and the moderate or the severe exacerbation history. So point to be noted here is uh, any exacerbation which is not leading to hospital is A and B and any hospital admission falls under C and D. Now based on the questioner score uh, which is not so important for the exam purpose but just to be aware so for 0 to 1 exacerbations not leading to hospital admission with a CAT score of less than 10 falls in group A with a CAT score of more than 10 falls in group B uh, any exacerbation more than 1 or 2 leading to hospital admission with a CAT score of less than 10 falls under C and with a CAT score of more than 10 falls under group D. Coming to the initial pharmacological treatment, so as per the classification under group A, B, C, D, uh, under group A, we use a bronchodilator, under group B, we use a LABA or a LAMA, any one, uh, under group C, we use a LAMA and under group D, we use LAMA or a LAMA-LABA combination or also ICS can be considered. To use ICS that is the inhaled corticosteroids, the criteria is if the eosinophil count is more than equal to 300. Uh, now the factors to consider when initiating ICS treatment that is the inhaled corticosteroids. So the strong criteria are if there is history of hospitalization for exacerbations that is the patient is uh, category C or D but more importantly if the exacerbation is more than 2 and also uh, the eosinophil counts are more than 300 mostly the patients are in the category D 
uh, and also if there is a history or a concomitant uh, asthma associated in that case uh, use of inhaled corticosteroids are beneficial coming to the management of copd overall once the diagnosis is done and the initial assessment where the abcd classification and the severity scoring is done the management mainly is pharmacological treatment and non pharmacological therapy and the initial management uh, where smoking cessation is the most important step and even this is a important question where you can be asked which is the most important step in copd management that is smoking cessation coming to the non pharmacological therapy besides smoking cessation the physical activity and exercise and the need for pulmonary rehabilitation are important steps also the use of oxygen with the help of bipap that is niv is very important in copd patients mostly in, as a initial management patients are put on niv and only if the patient collapses uh may be converted to invasive ventilation otherwise patients do very well with niv and also the main purpose is to uh, wash out the extra carbon dioxide that is the patient is retaining so let us go back to the question so if you see the question uh, the first question was the goals criteria for very severe copd is so we know very severe copd if you remember the table the uh, division is more than 80 that is mild 80 to 50 moderate 30 to 50 is severe and less than 30 is very severe so here they have asked very severe so option a is the right answer that is a very direct answer uh, second question a 60 year old man who is a known case of copd presented with acute exacerbation and is admitted to the icu which of the following statements is correct with regards to the initial management of this patient so we just discussed uh, in initial management always non-invasive ppv that is a non-invasive ventilation niv should be considered until unless a patient collapses then uh, invasive ventilation have to be considered uh, otherwise non-invasive ppv should be given that is the correct answer here iv corticosteroids is not uh, administered and permissive hypercapnia is also not allowed so non-invasive ppv is the answer i hope guys this video was useful where i tried to cover very important and salient features of copd and uh, not the entire topic in the next video i will be talking about the pulmonary function test that is a comparison between the obstructive and the restrictive diseases of the lungs so stay tuned till then keep studying keep revising and i'll see you in the next episode cheers